So here's where we'll be writing the code to calculate the experience of the employee and then calculate the bonus based on the experience. So two steps. First, we need to know what the experience is and then we need to know uh, what's the bonus amount, percentage, right? Um, for that, I was saying that we want it to be reusable. So here is the, here is where we want to calculate the bonus percentage. So let me just cut it out. Here is where we want to calculate the bonus percentage. So what we would do is, we would like name it, this particular code that we are going to write is going to be given a name. Calculate bonus percent. That's the name. Except you can't call it like this. You have to have the double parenthesis to indicate it's a function or a method. A function and method are very similar. A method does not return any value to the calling place, but a function can return a value. So that is the difference between a function and a method. So this is does not exist, right? We are just saying here we will calculate the bonus percent. And that segment of code will have this as the name. Okay. So now what we do is, let's go on the top, right after this class statement. This is where we are going to write the code for this particular. Okay, first of all, it's a public method. So when you see this keyword public, it means anybody can access call this method. Private means only it can be accessed within the particular um, code segment. Okay, this is public. Then you have to put the static method especially in a console application because otherwise you have to like go into object oriented programming and create an object and then access this and we don't want to do it at this point okay so just say public static the next is going to be the return value is this method going to return any value or not this method has to return the percentage of the bonus which is a double and then we start the block Okay, so this now is a function. It is going to return percentage. So it is going, we are going to write code here to calculate the experience and also the percent. This is where we are going to write the code. So this code is going to go in here. I just declared a variable called percent and we are going to return the value, okay? So you might be thinking, why do I have to like declare the variable percent when I already have it here? So this is where you have to understand scope. So a variable within a particular function, this is also a method, right? Is only local to that method. Like for example, it'll, it is like our pockets or our purses, okay? If you have a pen there, it's yours. It's not a public property, okay? If uh, another person in the class has a laptop, it belongs to them, not to, the, to, not to any other person. So what's available, all these variables are available only for this particular method called main. All these are only available for this particular method called calculate bonus percent. So these are called as local variables that are private that can be only used within this particular function and then you have some that are like uh, the water cooler right it is available it's public anyone can come and have a cup of water from there so that will be where they are called as public variables so these methods are like the water cooler that anyone can call and access but these variables are local so outside of this main this person means nothing so this percent is not the same as this person, even though they are going to have hold the same value eventually, they are just different, okay? What you use in this method is local to that method. So now let's think about it. What are the inputs to calculate bonus? We need to know the number of years of experience. So we need to ask this guy, when were you? What is your starting date of, empl starting date of employment? And then we know the current date so we can calculate the um, we can calculate the experience. So in uh, along with salary, we have to ask enter employee employment start date year. Let's keep it simple. Employment starting year. So we will put that year of employment 
start here so we will take that also I am not going into the date manipulation because it has a new type of variable called date type new type of data so I just don't want to confuse you with that that's why I am sticking to the year so here the starting year we know what is the current year how do we find the current year we can hard code it current year we called it 2020 this is one way there is another way there is another way to get the year so there is a method uh, we have this date time library if you say today daytime dot today you will get today's date and then from there the date will have the month date and year and uh, the time will have the current time and all that we just don't want all of that we just want the current year so this will give you the current year as of now you can hard code the value or you can get the current year which means when you run this program next year it will be 2021 so this is another way date time is a library okay it's a static class basically so here you go let me like show you it's a data type that can store a time anything related to date or time you can store in that particular data type you shouldn't store like date in uh, an integer or something like that okay so it is it's a structure type and then it has some methods that today is one of the uh, property so you can like look at this reference this later oh sorry okay so this will give us the current year this is the starting year so we don't even need it here okay let's think about it we don't need it there so all we are doing is in this particular code we are getting the salary and then we are getting the year starting year when they started the employment these two are enough the salary we need to calculate the bonus the percentage needs the starting of the year which year we are starting to work so here we can extend this as a parameter that means we are telling this method to use the start year that we are providing to calculate the experience so if I am sending something, there should be something to receive it here. So that would be, we are sending an integer here. See, I am saying, take the start year, which is 1985 maybe. And then when I send, somebody has to receive it. And that is why I am creating a variable here to receive it. So this is called as an input parameter. So now you can say here, int current equal to date time start today start year then you would say experience equal to current year minus start year and then you can say if experience less than or equal to 5 percent 0 0.10 else if experience less than or equal to 10 percent equal to 0 0.12 else sorry experience percent equal to 0 0.14 so this piece of code and how we calculated the current year, whatever complications you have in your code. All of this would have been inside this loop here, which would make it highly unreadable. That's why we are putting it separately by itself, like a little package. This package takes year as input, which is the starting of the um, employment year, does all the calculations, and then returns the percentage as output. So what is the percentage of bonus? It is returning. It is returning the percentage. So we have to catch it here. So now we have a variable called percent here. 
it's like a bucket to receive the bonus percent okay so this is called as a function so this function has an input and it has an output you don't always have to have inputs and output there could be times when you just um, you if there is no output you would just say void p o i d in this case it's double so the variable names if this is confusing you you can change the variable names um so they are different than the other function so you know like uh, they are two different they have different scope it's not exactly the same so that will help so what we are doing here instead of writing doing all the calculation and writing it here we just wrote one line here the rest of it goes here is all here so this doesn't have to be at the beginning it can be at the ending also you have to make sure it is after this it should go after this curly brace you can add a function here also it should be either above or below below this this particular method so what we saw is an example of how to create a function that takes an input parameter and returns an output returns a value to the calling method so this is function declaration and this is where we are calling the function or this is function definition okay here we are defining the function saying like what goes in the function and then what it is it public or private is it static or not what is the output type what is the input type a function can take more than one parameter also and i'll show you another example with that see you in the next video